Amen. An honor to be here tonight. We uh, choir went sing Monday night out at Williamston, and um, I'm hearing some music down in this speaker. I guess CT wasn't crazy. <laughs> I've been thinking all I've been thinking all along that he really is crazy, um, but I am hearing music. But that's fine. It's serenading me while I preach. I don't mind. Um, but we had the opportunity to go sing Monday night, and. And I had the, the joy of driving one of the vans, and, and Brother Bud Wilson sat up front with me, Barbara, and, and then Donna, uh, Donna Eden sat with us. And um, we began talking about our style of music, and we were talking about other styles of music. And I'm not uh, cr criticizing other people's styles, but one thing that stuck out to us, and we all agreed upon, you know, I, I went to a school for a little bit, and it didn't take long for me to leave there, where they sang the the worship and praise style, and, and I'm not here to criticize, don't get me wrong, but uh, for instance, we sang a song there, and it would say, you are Lord, you are holy, you are wonderful, you are, nothing wrong, I guess, because I knew who they were talking about, but I told them, I said, if a lost sinner walked in, they really don't know who you're talking about. You could be talking about Elvis Presley for all they know, right. but you go to Truth Missionary Baptist Church, it won't take you two seconds to find out who we're singing about. We sing about the cross, we sing about the blood, we sing about Jesus, and, and it doesn't take long to find out who we're singing about, and, and that's why I like our style. I'm not, like I say, I'm not criticizing. I know some good, uh, sincere Christians that, that like that style, but I'll just tell you why I like it, because I like to hear the Burton sing about the cross, and Calvary answers for me. Boy, if you're going through a trial and the devil's on your back, just, just take him back to Calvary. And I tell you, that always just stirs me up. And that's why I like what we do. And I'm not ashamed of that. If you'll take your Bibles to Job chapter 16, uh, 580 in the Old Schofield Bible, page 580, Job chapter 16, find verse number 12. We'll begin there and read down to 14. And then I'll look at two different passages in the book of Psalms. And we'll tie those three passages together to present a thought to you tonight that I pray could be a blessing to you. Uh, I, I'm encouraged that a lot of people have been blessed by the Sunday school lesson this morning. I am selling those CDs for $55 a piece, so <laughs> you can see me after the service if you want one. Uh, Mildred Diller did write that lesson for me, so uh, I do have to split the money with her, so that's why the price is so high. But thank you. I hope that was a blessing, and I got a blessing from our worship service this morning. I guess you just come around here, and it's just some good stuff all the time. That's why I like coming. And let's continue to pray for our pastor. Job 16, verse number 12, he said, I was at ease. Everything was going just fine. Life was, was rosy. The sun was shining. I was at ease, but he hath broken me asunder. He hath also taken me by the neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his mark. Do you ever feel like that, man? The devil, the flesh. Sometimes you think the Lord's just grabbing you around the neck and shaking your world up. He said, I was at ease, but he hath broken me asunder. He hath also taken me by the neck, by my neck, and shaken me to pieces, and set me up for his mark. His archers compass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder, and doth not spare. He poureth out my gall upon the ground. He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant, just running all over me, like a Mack truck. It's like he can't run over me one time, he's got to back up and do it again. Over in Psalm 31, 12, the psalmist said, I am forgotten as a dead man out of mine. I am like a broken vessel. Psalm 38, verse 8, he said, I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. In all those passages, the, the, the men in the Bible are talking about being broken, about being torn asunder, about their life necessarily being in shambles. And tonight, I want to present the thought of what to do when everything falls apart. Maybe sometimes in your life, that's just the way you feel. Uh, some circumstances come into your life. You feel that you have no hope. You have no way out. You just feel like everything's simply falling apart in your life. We've all been there, and we will all be there in those times. And it's important to have a solid foundation in those times. Job knew what it was like to be broken, torn apart mentally, emotionally, physically. Job experienced as great a painful trial as any one man will ever experience on the face of this earth. Uh, Job paints a picture here for us one that we can see ourselves in. We are living life as normal. Everything seems to be all right, just fine. The birds are singing, the sun is shining until slowly, 
and surely everything begins to fall apart. Job said, I was at ease, but he hath broken me asunder. He hath also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his mark. Sometimes it feels like we've just been run over by life. Sometimes we feel like the devil just runs over us and runs over us and backs up and runs over us again. And one more time just to rub it in. I believe we've all felt like that before. Proverbs 12, 25, the Bible says, Heaviness in the heart of a man maketh it stoop. And we all know that experience when something's heavy on our heart. Uh, Psalm 69, 20, the Bible says, Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. Proverbs 15, 13, the Bible says, But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Proverbs 17, 22, But a broken spirit drieth the bones. Here's a verse that doesn't seem to offer much comfort. Uh, you go over to Proverbs 24, 10, it says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Boy, how would you like somebody to walk up you in the middle of a trial, slap you on the back, say, well, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Thanks for the encouragement there. That doesn't really <laughs> seem to encourage you when you first initially look at that verse. Heaviness in the heart of man is real. Sometimes the experiences of this life simply take us to our breaking point. There are experiences that make us feel just like Job did, like everything is falling apart. Have you ever felt like when the flaming trials come that even though you try to throw water on the fire, it's as if that actually grows more intense. Sometimes we turn around and realize that instead of getting the water bucket, we grabbed a can of gasoline and we just increase the fire even more. Sometimes we just make a bigger mess of things in our lives. We try to put our hands on the situation and we make a mess. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have this little problem I guess a little disease is what a psychiatrist might say it is. And I get my hands on a situation and I'm infected with this thing called stupid. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever experienced that? Sometimes we just have a case of the stupids. And we like to get our hand on a situation. We talked a little bit about Peter in Sunday school. Sammy even talked about him. We know him as the one that always just stuck his foot in his mouth. He meant well, but sometimes... That's exactly what we do. I struggle with those moments. So often we're tempted to find our own solutions. We're, we try to fix our own mess. We try to solve other people's problems in our own strength. We try to mend a situation and we utterly fail. And too often we make a terrible mess, don't we? There are extreme circumstances that some face and where it's not that they've done anything wrong. It's not that they're living in sin. It's not that God is judging them necessarily, but He might be putting through them through the fire. Study the life of Job. He was an upright man. The Bible says he walked upright. He eschewed evil. He, he was a godly man, and God allowed those trials to come into his life. Uh, this past week, I don't know if you uh, paid attention to any of the news, there was a family uh, named the Kretzman family, Matt and Lana Kretzman, both 26 years old, and their two daughters, uh, they stayed overnight in Lexington. The whole family did. They were on their way to a missionary conference in Ohio. But the, the family's minivan hit a patch of ice uh, on Interstate 74 just past uh, North Carolina overpass. And it went into a broad skid and it hit an interstate sign. The side of the van ran into that sign. And the pole impacted the van in the area where their daughter, Aslan, was sitting in her car seat. Paramedics on the scene tried to save her life. But despite their best efforts, she was pronounced dead at the Northern Hospital. I, I was able to watch a video online just this week where a reporter had met up with Matt Kretzman out in front of the hospital and wanted to interview him. Days after his wife's still in serious uh, issues, she's had, I think, a broken leg. Uh, her liver was lacerated, uh, and she's going to recover, but it's going to be, I think, about 10 weeks before she's out of therapy. And, and I'm thinking, here's a family doing their best to serve God on the road to another missionary conference. And little did they know that their life was about to drastically change. And, and in a moment, their world would fall apart. Amen. In my opinion, that's what I would define as falling apart. Right. And though they say in the report that she died at the hospital, the dad, out of his own mouth, said that he went over to the side of the car door and they could barely get in. They actually had to get the jaws of life to get the car apart. But he got his little baby girl out of the car and he held her in his arms as she died, three years old. I can't explain that. I, I can't describe, I can't imagine. I don't have a baby girl, but I couldn't imagine. And that dad was not even crying, and the reporter, and, and, I mean, I, this was a stupid moment. She said, how are you not crying? He said, I've cried everything I had. 
She said, I've cried every tear for days. She said, how are you even going on? And what blessed my heart, he said, well, you've heard us talk about the peace of God. He said, I can't explain it. It's just like it came over us. And you say, how could something good come out of a situation like that? I also read later that that mama, when she got out of surgery, led her nurse to the Lord. Can you believe in a, in a situation like that? When she's down, when she's discouraged, when it seems my world is falling apart, I'm serving God, I'm doing my best, I'm, I'm, I'm going down the road, Lord, for your glory. You take the life of my precious little baby. I couldn't imagine what that's like. But did you know that there's people all over the world today, people in this very church today, people in this county, people in this state that are hurting just like that? Every single moment. It may not be the death of a loved one. It may be a phone call they just received. They've got cancer. they got some daily disease. Or they have a wayward child. Or they've got a lost loved one that's on their deathbed. And they don't know if they'll get saved. Those trials and those heartaches come to our life. And the Bible says heaviness in the heart of a man maketh it stoop. Those things that dry you up. Those things that burden you down and they'll weigh you down. Amen. I want to know what are you going to do when your world falls apart? What are you going to do? Me and Brother Ashley and Edwin almost had a little church service before church tonight. We were talking about those things that keep us going. And I said, I like the shouting. I like the emotional stuff. And, and as Brother Ashley so aptly pointed out, he said, if all your life and your, your faith is based on that shout, then it'll fall. It's because we're rooted in something else that gives us a shout. That's why we can get excited. Look, my, my hope is not based upon a shout, but I shout because I have something to hope in. I'm telling you, I'm not here tonight happy in the Lord because of something I can accomplish or acquire us song the choir sings. I just know what the choir is singing about. We've got the truth of God in our hands tonight. Amen. The world looks at us and thinks we're crazy. In spite of those trials, in spite of those difficulties, how in the world do we go on? I mean, I can't understand a mother who just lost her three-year-old would have the just the, the boldness to witness to somebody. I, I, I just, I don't think that would be on my mind in a time like that. To praise the Lord. And we do need to pray for this family. I We've got some men in our, uh, our circles. I know Sammy, some of the guys he hangs out with, they, they know this family. They support this family. So we need to pray for this family. And that's just one story. All over the world tonight, homes are being torn apart. Lives are being destroyed. Hearts are broken. Minds are weighed down with a guilty conscience. Men and women, teenagers everywhere are losing sleep, fearing what might happen tomorrow. Uh, guilty consciences everywhere. Even God's people are facing turbulent times. An unstable economy. Trouble at home. A wayward child. A discouraging work situation. The list goes on and on. And it feels like every moment our world is just being ripped apart. We wonder, why should we go on? Why should we open our Bible and read it? Why should I go to the house of God? I don't feel like serving God. I don't feel like going on. Why in the world should I go on? And like Job, we feel like we just keep getting stepped on and run over by a giant enemy. Will we ever catch a break? Will we ever see the light of day? When will things get back to normal? And how are we going to make it through this time? I don't know about you. There's times I want to open my Bible and read. I, I, think about those, I try to think about those familiar verses that I've read and read. I just can't seem through the tears to find it. And there's times I, I know those songs we sing, they're, they're good. And sometimes I just, I, I have to be honest and something on my mind. I don't feel like singing those songs. And, and, and I, sometimes I just want to cry and weep and moan and, and groan. And boy, you go over to Romans 8, 26. I say, Lord, I, I can't sing. I just want to cry. And you know what? He says, I understand what you're saying. Go to Romans 8, 26 and 27. Read that sometime. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But he knows exactly what we mean. 